Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm super excited because I just downed a huge Red Bull. But anyway, okay, what was I gonna say? All right, I remember, no I don't, hmm, man. <laughs> that Red Bull, woo! All right, but seriously, we're going to cover multi-tier routing in today's lesson, specifically what is it. I was actually going back over some old videos and I found a 25 minute video I did on NSXT routing and it was good, but it was very low quality and I did it a long time ago. So I figured I'd do a little bit of a refresh for people that are new to the channel. Now, before I get into that, I'm gonna ask a big favor of you guys. Please hit the subscribe button. 80% of you are not subscribed. So please subscribe. I can definitely use the subs. It helps me more than you know. In addition to that, you'll get updates about new content like this. That said, let's jump right into multi-tier routing and let's talk about this. All right, so when we talk about NSXT multi-tier routing, what are we talking about? It's really this design here where we have a T1 gateway and a T0 gateway. Now, the first thing I wanna address is what is a T1 and a T0? These are just logical routers, that's all they are. They have routing tables, they have interfaces, they run a version of a routing protocol, that sort of thing. So don't let the terminology get you too confused. Now, when we say multi-tier, what that means is that the T0 is the first tier and the T1 is the second tier. Now we could have additional T1s and that's why we call it multi-tier. We could connect up to that T0. We could have another one over here. Same thing up to that T0. Now, what is the T0 responsible for? The T0 is ultimately responsible for this physical connectivity to the physical network. So it's going to run something like either BGP or OSPF to a physical router that is in that physical environment. So this is ultimately kind of your on off ramp to and from NSX for these overlay networks that we're going to create. So hopefully that makes sense. Now that's a basic multi-tier setup and there's some design decisions on why you would do this. One of the biggest ones would be, I wanna have multiple tenants. So uh, maybe I wanna have, you know, this light blue tenant right here. I wanna you know, create some segments off of this. I'll just put seg and I'm gonna have some VMs there. Now, maybe I decide either that's a separate tenant, so I want them to have their own environment. They can kind of manage their own T1s, that sort of thing. Or maybe I want to automate the standup of these tenants. Uh, so I could use something like vRealize automation, or maybe I just want separate security policy. I want them kind of isolated to some degree, but ultimately I want them to route through my T0 that I manage. So there's a few reasons why you would do that. I do wanna address one more big reason why you would do this. So when we have a T0, I'm gonna draw that out there. We have two choices from an, a high availability standpoint. We can do either active active or active standby. Now, if we do active active, we cannot do NAT. So that's a big reason. So if you say, Mike, I'm gonna have a bunch of traffic coming in and out of my environment. So, you know, I don't, I'm not doing multi-tenancy, but I'm gonna have a lot of traffic coming in and out. I need that T0 to be active active. Well, that's fine, you can do that, but now you can't do NAT on the T0. So what's the solution? Well, that's when we get into the multi-tier discussion. So the solution here is if we were gonna do active active there, the T1s are always active standby. So what we do here is we run NAT on the T1, and we're doing active active on that T0. So then we connect, you know, of course our segments and we have our VMs right here and it looks something like that. So that's why we would do a multi-tier design. And to be honest, when most customers, I can't talk that Red Bull again. Most customers I work with would do this design specifically for this reason. They want to do active standby on the T0 because they want NAT, but they do want the high throughput of the T0 because maybe they have additional T1s over here and it's all funneling up there. So they're concerned about throughput. So that's a big reason. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is T1, T0, and just understanding how they connect to each other. So it's pretty simple. So a T1 will always connect to a T0. A T0 will never connect to another T0. That's just not going to happen. This is a no-no. In addition to that, we cannot have a T1 connect to another T1. That is also a no-no. So at the end of the day, it's really simple. T1 always connects to T0, T0 always connects to T1 or multiple T1s, that's perfectly fine. Now, what's cool here too is that the routing for this link that they connect between the two, it's all automated. So there's actually an internal subnet that is allocated by NSX. I believe it's 100.64.something something. 
it's in the documentation or in the NSX manager if you have it open. But this link right here, that is basically auto plumbed for you. So you go into the GUI, you pick your T1 gateway, you say, I wanna connect it to this T0 right here. It assigns IPs, sets up that link. And then at that point, you get to decide what routes, I'm gonna put routes here, do we want to advertise to the T0? So you get to select that. You can say, you know, advertise all connected segments or advertise only some of them. You can do static routes, whatever the case is, you have a lot of flexibility there. And then from the T0, we have to keep in mind that's going to the physical network out there, right? So, you know, we have OSPF or BGP, right? Now we get to decide here, do we want to, I'm just gonna put redistribution. So do we want to take those routes we're learning and redistribute those into the physical network? or not. We have all of the flexibility there. We can do filtering and that sort of thing. So just keep that in mind at a high level. That's how routing works between those two. Now, typically what I've seen is for the T0 inbound from the physical network, we'll just send a default route. So in this case, you know, we would have like, uh, you know, 000, right? Just, just a default route being advertised into that T0. And it now advertises that out to the rest of the environment, right? So that's pretty much how, how it's worked or how it works in most cases that I've seen. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. That was meant to just be a brief overview of the multi-tier architecture, why you would do it, and a couple of the design considerations. I will be going into routing a bit more in the coming videos because I realize I need to update some of my older stuff. So we will be getting into that. But that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. And knowing that you've subscribed, you must feel really good because you get all the new stuff, right? You see what I did there? Anyway, that said, until next time, stay nerdy.